Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this fantastic outdoor entertaining area. It's going to have two solid sides which are cladded, one side which is vented to allow air in but keep the sun out, and the whole structure has a solid waterproof roof. And the tools you're going to require to build this are a chop saw or a hand saw if you don't have one, a circular saw, a jigsaw, a sander, cordless drills, a compressor and a nail gun, and some hand tools like a hammer, tape measure, silicone gun, various size rollers and a rolling tray. First thing you're going to need to do is draw yourself a plan. Work out the sizes that you want for your structure. So my structure is going to be four meters in length and three meters in width. I'm going to create a frame for the base and it's going to be in three sections here. I'm doing smaller ones so they're easier to manage. I'll bolt them all together, make sure they're all level. Then I'll fit four corner posts here coming upright. They'll be anchored into the ground by metal post brackets. Our floor, once that frame is in, that will get hung and groove floorboard. And the side frame structure will consist again, three on the one side bolted together and two on one side. These frames that we see along here, they'll all be cladded with close board fencing. It's gonna have a roof structure. This would be a flat roof. We'll have a little bit of a fall, just of about 50 millimeters off one side, just so we can control the rainwater on there. And then we'll finish that, the top of that, by putting big 8 2 roof sheets on the tongue and groove method. We'll be finished off with a rubber liquid membrane. We'll have a nice sheltered, secured area with two sides, a good solid base for entertaining, and of course, a waterproof roof. Now I've cut kit apart ready for the first frame. I've got five lengths here at 2.1, and I've cut two pieces for either end at about 1.3. Them added on to there will take it up to 2.2, which is the height that I want for one of my side sections. A couple of noggins in between them to stiffen it all up. They're going to be around about 350 millimeter centers. that's one wall section frame now complete just four more of them to go and three more for the floor so this is the area where I'm going to be fitting my structure I'm going to bring in my three base pieces lay them all out it's three meters one way and four meters that way I'll screw them together and then I'll screw and bolt them to the actual floor to hold them into position Now the three sections of the frame are fixed together, I need to fix it down to the floor. So I'm going to use myself some angle brackets, screw them into the side, drill a hole into the slab, put a raw plug in it and then drive a screw in. That'll hold it firmly to the masonry floor. As well as the angle brackets, I also drilled through the main pieces of timber and anchored that into the slabs themselves. What we found was once the whole frame is in position, some of the existing flags were a little bit uneven and we found them we were having voids underneath them. So we put some plastic packs under there to make it rigid, made sure that it was level, then screwed it down firmly and filled any of the voids with an expandant foam. Now I'm going to leave the expandant foam to dry overnight so it'll be nice and solid in the morning, ready to fit my floorboards.
Now the four corner post that we're using predominantly holds the weight of the roof. The front one here will take a lot of the weight, but the other three will only take part of the weight, but they all have to be anchored down using these base brackets here. Now our two that's set at the back are set into the frame just about 50 millimeters. So when the walls are on the side here and they're cladded, we'll still see a little gap and it makes the post stand out and really look nice. However, the front is gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna be stepping it back here because when we had the design brief for this one, it was three meters by four meters. We constructed the frame at my workshop. We brought it to location and then realized there's a little small corner step in our way there. So a slight adjustments on one corner of the frame, which is not a problem, it stepped it back, but I have to follow suit with this front corner post because if I don't, when I come to put my top railing on our roof section, it will be staggered out and we don't want that. So now my slabs are drilled and plugged, I'm ready to put my bracket in and these uneven slabs are playing up again. If I screw that down nice and tight, this bracket itself isn't going to be level. Therefore, my post standing upright, of course, is going to be even more out. So what I'm going to do is screw it down, bolt it down, should I say, nice and tight on the highest point. And then this section here will need raising, and I'll do that by packing it up with some washers. The boat will go right through them so they won't move out, and it'll firmly fix this down to the ground, making sure it's level. So that's our four corner base plates now firmly fixed to the ground, nogged in all around, ready for the floorboards, which is the next stage. The floorboards I'm going to be using, they're already cut to four meters in length. I've pre-painted them as well, because I know if we paint them, we can't work on top of them, of course. They're going to be 25 millimeters thick by 140 millimeters wide. They're going to be fixed down using our air compressor and nailed into each piece of timber below. Now all the tongue and groove floorboards are firmly fixed into position. The structure of the floor is now complete. The next stage is the structure of the walls going up. We've got two walls on this build, one right the way across the back here and one up the side. Now my back frame is fixed into position and leveled out. I'm ready to start cladding it. Now the material I'm going to be using is it's a pre-treated feather edge fence board. Quite often you see these fitted upright like the fences behind us here and they lap on top of one another there. I'm going to be fitting mine horizontal. So they're going to be lapped over like this running down the wall. But my very first one you can see along here, I've had to cut it with the fall of the floor. I've built my frame onto a solid floor that's running into a drain that way. Therefore, my first one, I've had to cut it with the same fall. So when my second piece is fitted that way, the second piece will be perfectly level, so will the third, fourth, and so on, all the way to the top.
So that's all the close board fencing cladded around the two walls. One little tip to make sure that you get the spaces between these perfectly equal and level. Get yourself a board, just cut about 20 millimeters off there. Fit your first one, make sure it's level. Remember our floor was running down, so we had to cut it down, chamfer it to get the first one fitted level. So the top edge of it is level. And then your second board and everyone therefore after that, you place one of them over it. You feel along the bottom here, making sure that it meets the bottom both ends. That way you know the one that you're mounting on top is level and you've got this same size gap with that 20 millimeters cut off. So the next board you're putting on is lapping over it 20 millimeters, which is what you want. And then get your nail gun and fix that into your frame. The next stage is my four corner posts to be cut down to size, fitted in place and leveled. Now we're fitting the roof joists with span across from the front to the back onto this bearing timber here. So I use this timber as a space maker, set it in here and that gives me 350 millimeters between each joist. They're gonna be held in place by a joist hanger. This is marked up to set for the depth of my timbers. We screw it into position, we sit the timber on and then we drive big 120 mil screws in from the back tight into that timber and that pulls it nice and tight right up against there. Once that's in, we then fix it in the sides. We bend these over like this and fix them from the face as well. This edge here has been cut down just a fraction on an angle. Although this timber here is upright, when we slide this in, we need it to fit really nice and snug and butt up tight against there. But this top is higher than that by about 60, 70 millimeters. So we create a very small floor on the actual flat roof. You can't see it by eye, but it will direct and control the rainwater just one way. Now all 12 roof joists are set into position and fixed only one side. The reason I fixed them only one side is this backside here are left loose at the minute. Now I'm going to cut some noggins at 350 centers and place them in between there. If I'd fixed that down first, sometimes it's a little bit difficult trying to get them in, you're hammering them in and out. But whilst they're loose, slide them in, pin them into position and then move on to the next one. Once all the noggins are set in place, then you can fix it down at the back. So I'm just putting one screw in there for the moment, just to stage them all out and set them into position. Once I've got the whole lot in, I'll take the nail gun, put some larger nails on, and shoot them in top and bottom. So there'll be three fixings going in, each noggin, both sides. Now the 12 main joists of the roof all come this way and sat onto this beam. First of all, we've doubled that up for strength and to comply to regulations. And then we've created a box form on here. It's like a ladder. Two sections of timber. These were just offcuts that we had left. Lots of little noggins in between. And what that's done is it's extended our roof out because I want to have a little bit of an overhang 
overweigh my beams on here. It gives it more depth to the roof. It's a better design. It makes the uh, posts themselves even stand out a little bit more prouder. Although they're going to be set in, it will make a difference on the eye. And of course, you've got a longer kind of canopy hangover for your deck below. With the fascia boards, I'm using a soft wood and I don't want any movement on there. So I'm applying a good grip adhesive right the way along here that's got a bit of flexibility in it to allow it to move. And I'm pinning it in both top and bottom. But as you can see, I'm putting six pins in across the top and only two on the front. Because once this is painted up, you're only going to be able to see this bottom half. Once the roof board comes on, it's fixed down. Then it gets a fiberglass trim that comes around and caves over here. So we're not actually going to see them six nails there. That's why I'm putting more in the top and not that many at the bottom. Now the roof boards I'm using, the 18mm OSB boards, they're 8 foot in length and they're 2 foot wide. Now the way we set our joists out initially, leaving our spaces in between, was when we sail a full length board, which is a metric size, 2.4 metres, the joists land directly in the middle of the joists here. What we don't want to have is this overhanging and then your tongue and groove joint on there connecting but there's a bit of a bounce in the middle because it's going to be visible as well from the inside. You can't just put a noggin underneath it and secure it there. So it is very important when you are setting these out to try and get them right to match in with your size boards. Fixing them down is quite easy. We're using a flexible adhesive right the way across all the joists. Then we're using a glue, a waterproof one that goes in between the tongue and groove joints. They're then put into place, tapped up, making sure the tongue and groove joint is nice and tight and closed up then you can screw them down with a 50 millimeter posi screw, which will go right through the 18 mil board and firmly into the joist below. Now, quite often when you purchase some boards, depending on what spec they are, they have some writing on the underside of them or print on there. And sometimes that's specifying whether these are tantalized, whether they've used indoors or outdoors, whether they've got fire retardant materials on them, etc. But the reason why we normally would put them on the roof with this side up and then the writing on the inside if building control was coming around to inspect your work, sometimes they want to be able to see what is stated on the back of that board because quite often the moment it's put down on a roof like this, it's covered with a waterproof material so you can't actually see then what's actually on the board but you can always see from the underside. So I've now got a rectangular frame, which is nearly 2.2 meters in length and 800 mil in the width. The next stage is I'm gonna cut my slats to go in between here. So I'll take a measurement in case it's sagging a little bit there in the middle. And that is giving me about 712 millimeters. 
712. So again, you at home obviously check what sizes you're gonna build your frame if you're putting a kind of a louvered window frame in like this one. Okay, so starting the first row off now, we've got two pieces with a square edge at 90, which are gonna be fixed along the bottom like this. Each slat is gonna be pressed snug up against that, and then the ones we cut with the two angles on, 22 and a half degrees, will be sat on the top of that, and then of course, so on with this. We have to fix these firmly into position. So I'm going to start by applying some glue. It's the normal external wood glue on the back of these. Put a couple of pins in there. And now this one, because we're going to have a tiny little bit of a gap and things around there, I'm going to use a fillet that acts as a glue. Same again the other side. In there, It'll grip it really well. Fill in any gaps so there's no loose bouncy bits. And then the next ones with the two edges that are cut down can be with a glue on them. Whenever you are using a gun towards yourself, always stand out of range of it. Now my last one, there's no point me gluing that one in just yet, because these little sections are gonna go behind there, but the width and shape of them, I can only come in from the underside there. So that's one louvered frame now complete. I've just got to build two more. So that's the structure of my outdoor entertaining area, now complete and painted. If you're looking for more how-to videos, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you need to know more about the tools I've been using, just check out the website, silverlandtools.com.